Welcome to St. Augustine this evening, the Mike Davis Show, and boy, we are organized today. Almost organized. We've got great guests, and they were talking to us, and so, you know, in typical Mike Davis fashion, I got distracted. Amanda, however, was in top of everything. Sure she was. She was amazing. She reminded me, she hey, you might want to do some reads today and make some money before we introduce our guests. Too. And so, we have reads for you. We do. Because we love our sponsors, and they're absolutely amazing. Uh, Power yeah, Heating and Air Conditioning, uh, their dedication to customer service is evident in everything they do from the moment they answer from the moment they answer your call till the time they leave your home. They're working to make sure you're comfortable, confident about the care and service you receive from Powell. They've got a fleet of over 10 trucks and a 15,000-square-foot warehouse stocked with parts and equipment. They've been in business in St. Augustine for over 40, 39 years, 30 years. Years, over right? 39 years over 39 you changed the math you just didn't write it big enough for me sorry i'm old i uh, have failed you again <laughs> in 24 hours a day seven days a week including nights weekends and holidays powell heating and air 794-2665 they're great it's hot out there today yes get your ac service before Absolutely. it goes out you're going to need it this summer powell heating and air conditioning and you've got that memorized because i changed that before Christmas, and you just noticed it for the first time. Solar Stick, they were established in 2006. They are a local portable power company, proudly committed to American manufacturing, constant innovation, and creating jobs right here in St. Augustine, Florida. Solar Stick's focus on providing solutions for self sufficiency helps users all over the world complete missions and save lives. Solar Stick, Changing lives, saving lives, and reviving American manufacturing. We also have A to Z. They offer free estimates, and they have been serving St. John's County for over 20 years in the construction industry. A to Z offers painted metal roofs for saltwater area homes with warranties for up to 25 years. They also offer shingle roofs with warranties for up to 50 years. They install tile roofing, cedar shake shingles, and designer roofing and flat roof coverings. Recent job photos with material descriptions can be seen on their website a to z roofing and waterproofing.com and i had to do an ad substitution <laughs> there's one ad we can't do with small children in here and right. you gave me that ad you made me do that ad in front uh, of my kids i know your kids are used to that <laughs> uh, the team at south state bank is a group of bankers you can count on their approach to building long-term relationships with their customers is the best mm -hmm. in the business if you're looking for a banking relationship that you can depend on check out south state bank they've got three locations to serve you here in st augustine one on state road 16 one on 312 and my favorite branch over at the beach because i don't have to cross a bridge yes uh you can you can visit their website uh, southstatebank.com they are a member of the fdic and they are an amazing bank they're the bank of this show they are all right, couple of quick Thanks, announcements. Yes, thank you, South State. Keep Amanda's check safe. <laughs> um, this weekend, Surf Quest, presented mm -hmm. by the Ark and uh, Rotary, will be at the Mary Street Ramp, Butler yep. Beach, at 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, so go if you hang want, out with Bobby. Go hang out with Bobby <laughs> and his family. Uh, Tim, the legend yeah. O'Neill, will also oh, be there. So um, stop by and see them all. Um, they're going to be a great day. And uh, you and I have a date. We do. With our spouses. Double date. The second annual Grand Luau for Task Force Hydro One mm -hmm. Good will job. be uh, <laughs> May 11th, 5 to 8 p.m. Last night we were going over weekend plans, Darcy and I, and she says, what time is that? I said, 5 to 8 p.m. <laughs> and I said, wait a minute, I got to go check. I've only done the read on it a million times. One I need to go things. make sure that we have that. You've said it so many times. Now you're double checking. I you had to double right. check. <laughs> yes. And... Um, According to Jackie Hurd in her amazing calendar of mm -hmm. St. Augustine, it's the St. Augustine Food and Wine Festival today. Ooh, nice. I don't know where that is, but it's out there somewhere. Text me the location. <laughs> yeah, if somebody's out there, let us know, and, and we will let you know. Yep. Um, all right. Uh, we have some amazing guests. We do. From the St. Augustine Montessori School. Mm -hmm. So, Alicia, welcome. Thank you. But introduce yourself. Let, let our listeners know who you are. So. Hi, I'm Alicia Young. I am at... Parent volunteer at the St. Augustine Montessori School, and I'm also affiliated as staff on the Pioneer School, and I mentioned that, and I'll bring it up again in a minute why. And I am super excited to talk with you today about Odyssey of the Mind. Well, we are glad to hear. We're glad you're here. Amanda uh, mm -hmm. invited you on this show. I did. And every guest a man has ever brought on has been absolutely amazing. So you are going to do amazing as well. <laughs> oh, that's pressure. No, there's no, no right. pressure. <laughs> 
There's no pressure off. I would brought you on. The pressure would be not to be the worst guest I've ever brought on. We are friends to the same amazing lady, Crystal Jones, and so she connected us. Ooh. So awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Crystal. So the Montessori School, ten years old this year. Yes. Uh, and you are the. You're next. You're on San Marco, near the entrance to uh, the Fountain of Youth. Yes. Yeah. The most beautiful street in the oh. city, right? Mm, One of Magnolia. the most. Yes. yes. The only problem is you try to get a picture of it, and With as cars. soon as yeah, and it gets like, okay, I'll wait till this car goes. Yeah. Oh, there's four more cars. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, somebody goes walking down the street trying to take a picture from the other end. And you're like, well, we're both ruining each other's picture. But it is the most amazing street. It is really beautiful. <laughs> they had a, my son's prom a couple of weeks mm-hmm. ago, and we did peacocks. the same thing, trying to take pictures. And peacocks showed up. A pirate mm-hmm. showed up. It was a long walk down that road just trying to get a picture. Yes. Yeah. You got to <laughs> love St. Augustine. It you was never so great. Know. Like, someone in costume, you know, pirate, settler, uh, peacock, you know, parrots who knows yep. you never know <laughs> it, it is um yeah it, it's always kind of interesting because you never know what you run into mm-hmm. where you run into them or why in saint augustine yes yeah it is a very it's uh there are quite a few i go over the bridge of lines in the morning coming to work and uh, usually there's joggers there's walkers there's bikers and occasionally there's just a flamboyant character walking over the bridge mm-hmm. and you go yeah that's saint augustine i told my husband we've ruined our kids they can't live anywhere else because mm-hmm. they're so used to seeing reenactors everywhere and there's always something happening there's musicians there's always something interesting on the street horse-drawn carriages they're never going to be able to live anywhere quite like this and it's yet so small yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> it feels such like a family mm-hmm. absolutely so how long have you been with the Montessori school? I had a son who's now a junior in mm-hmm. high school, went there in fifth grade. Okay. We transitioned from homeschool, and I said, if my children were to go anywhere, it would be to St. Augustine Montessori School. Mm-hmm. And we have been just so happy with our experiences there. My son had a phenomenal fifth grade year, and then he moved on, but um, we've had children there ever since. So we've had, uh, this is our my youngest and she's now in fourth grade and been happy there since she was in, in pre-K. And, and Kelsey and there. Isaac are our guests from the Montessori School. Yes. Um, welcome, guys. Girls. Thank you. Guys <laughs> and girls. Um, so you, you've had one through there, another one going through now. Um, and two more. And two more. So you had the... F- We've had multiple children at the Montessori That's School. So you have been very, I would mark that as a satisfied parent. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. We're very happy. Um, and you homeschooled before. Mm-hmm. So is it, so I'm sure you didn't just take your kids and drop them at the Montessori School and went, okay, I'm done. You know, that's a, bi- a big reason why we chose the Montessori mm-hmm. School was because we knew that there would be a small community, an yep. involved parent community. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what we've experienced. Yeah. We have, you know, we all know each other. The, we know the kids, we know the parents, we support each other, and lots of like-minded parents, which is exactly what we wanted. And the, how many uh, grades at the Montessori? So do you, is it K through, is it K preschool? Through six. K well, through six. Right, pre-K. Pre-K through six, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. so they so that's good. And, and I think that's important. Our kids went to a small private school as well, and I always said that was one of the biggest things is knowing the parents, right? Knowing yes. who was around your kids. And, and if somebody said, you know, we've got to take them to a sporting event, you're like, okay, yeah, we're good. We know those parents. And so that always gave us a, a lot of, uh, of ease of mind, right? Darcy and I both like, okay, this is great. We know. And we had one uh, mom who gave our youngest son rides for so long. We would just get together with her like every couple of weeks because he was our child that left things everywhere he went. <laughs> like, we'll just swing by the house and pick up everything that's in your car. Yeah, She's a like, lost yeah. and found. In yeah, it was. It was our own <laughs> lost and found for our youngest son. So, yes. Well, with Montessori education, isn't it required for parents to volunteer a certain number yes. of hours? It's parent involvement in Montessori is key, right? Yes. Uh, we have all kinds of possibilities for volunteers. So certainly we're volunteering through helping to clean the building or to spread mulch in the summertime. Um, we've help to sandbag because we're kind of down there right where it's a bit of a flood zone. Yeah. And through the years, I've had the opportunity to teach classes there as volunteer, uh, music classes. And this year has been absolutely wonderful getting to volunteer as, a, as an Odyssey for Mind coach with some pretty fabulous children. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, it, all kinds of different opportunities for volunteers. So that's awesome. That so what is the Odyssey of the Mind? Odyssey I mean, for me, it's showing up every day and working with Amanda, but I'm... <laughs> Right. So I love that it's called Odyssey mm-hmm. because it means a journey. And 
it's taking off of the old books, The Odyssey, Mm -hmm. meaning so we take children on a journey of creativity. And the program was started, I'm going to read to make sure that I get this right. It was started by Dr. C. Samuel Miklis a really long time ago at Rowan University, and he wanted to give him give his students some really unusual prompts as their projects. So mm-hmm. this is more than 40 years ago. And he told them that they should try to get a, to build a vehicle that could get across water. And that's pretty much all he said. Mm-hmm. Get some vehicle, some something across the water. And he kind of left it really open-ended. Mm-hmm. He had students create absolutely ridiculous kinds of projects. Yeah. Some of which um, have actually sparked other current things in Odyssey that are even special awards, the highest kinds of awards, because it's not really about success. It's about how far you can push that creativity. Okay. And creativity meaning something's functional, but also unusual and and new. Mm -hmm. And so it's all about blending and marrying those two things. New and unusual and fresh, but also that it's functional. And so the problem-solving competition takes children of all ages all the way from kindergarten up through college and puts them in categories and says, here's a team, here's a funny problem, Mm -hmm. here's a tiny budget, and you go off and create solving these problems that that we will then present in only eight minutes to competitions all over the world. And so his his kind of problems that he gave to his students sparked this amazing worldwide competition that's been around for more than 40 years. So I have a question about Dr. C. Samuel Miklas. I hope I know the answer. No, well, it, it's, it's really, so he asked his students to come up to build a vehicle without wheels that could, could cross a lake. Was he from Palatka? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I, I think? I think he's from I the Midwest, think, and that's yeah. why they held these yeah. events in the yes. Midwest now. But you know, yeah. I've I've seen some pretty amazing yeah. <laughs> solutions, and I've got to think that some of these kids mm-hmm. from Palakka would be doing a really good would job. Would be a really there. good job over there. Yeah, it's like we've got for that. sure. They are creative kids. Uh, I'm just kidding. I mean, if you live out in the woods and you have all kinds of things left over, you're like, what can we make out of this, and what can we do? So it's a lot of. I mean, I don't know if you know the the story during. Um, World War II, after the D-Day invasion, uh, we got hung up in the hedgerows in France. Right. And nobody knew how to get through the hedgerows. And they had all of these uh, servicemen that were from the Midwest that were farmers. They actually designed and built the the things that were put on the front of trucks and tanks that went through the hedgerow. Yeah. Nobody knew how to do it. And they're like, really? oh, we got the, yeah, we can design. Yeah, this is just like farming, right? It's just like, that. so they actually came up with a solution for it because they had been on the farm and they said, yeah, we can come up with something that'll right. work for that, which I think is great. You have this whole army that's got this plan. And then do we have some random guys from the Midwest that maybe could solve this problem? Everyone for us? needs a redneck. Yes. If you have a problem yep. that cannot be solved, do you need a redneck with ingenuity? That's what you need. Yeah. I grew up in a very small town that Pilatka reminds me a lot of yeah. in southeast Idaho mm-hmm. and um, it, amid the potato fields. So that whole concept of creatively solving problems to yeah. when your machinery breaks down, mm-hmm. I understand that too. Yeah. Probably where this load came. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. Well, it's a special kind of creativity and ingenuity yes. to be able to take what you have and solve a problem that no one else can figure out a solution right. for. And that there's multiple solutions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you take the same problem. There's one of five options given to, there's an extra one that's given only to tiny children. But other mm-hmm. than that, there's five given to the same problem given to younger elementary school children all the way up through college. And you get thousands of different solutions Mm -hmm. to those same five problems. And sometimes they just absolutely blow your mind what kids this age will come up with. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So how long have you guys been doing Odyssey of the Mind? Three years. This is both of our third year in Odyssey. Mm -hmm. And first time we've gone to World Finals. Is it really fun? Yes. Yes. What was the first project you had to do? Uh, We had a problem five one, which is um, the draw... Uh, drama problem and uh, we the creative material that we used was old school supplies like uh, pencil shavings um, erasers old pencils and lots of different things we've had um, trouble with our backdrops every single year (laughs) every single year backdrops fall over backdrops 
I'm made hurt out people. Of my material. <laughs> people. We have screws sticking out that can impale people. <laughs> Has anybody been impaled? That's in his mom. mom a little bit. Okay, all right. <laughs> Just a little impaling. <laughs> yeah. Does she stand well away from the backdrops now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. Lesson learned. So, what are you, what did you guys work on this year? What was um, your project? This year was a car, and he built it. So this year we did problem one, which is the car problem. So we have to build a car. This is ours, which has to travel at least six feet and two, six feet forward twice once to grab a ticket because it's a driving movie, and another to grab a food item, and then it also has to go backwards into a parking spot and stop in the parking spot, and so it has to complete those tasks and then also can't have any outside assistance from a teammate, so you can't push it or pull it or anything. It has to run on its own. Okay. So what we have is if you close the tip of a syringe with a balloon, if you pull it back, it's really hard, so it shoots back into place. Yep. And when you tie a string around an axle, then you wind that up, and that pulls the syringe, which then triggers it to pull forward. And, um, and if you do that opposite, it goes back. And the uh, outside assistant part is um, this entire problem. I, uh, only the um, teammates that can be up to seven um, can help. No adults, no other children. And if we do um, use uh, a, a another person's idea that we like can't use, like if it's outside assistance, then uh, we will get penalized. So no checking the internet. They can check so the internet. We, we can, can check, check the internet. internet to get ideas, but we can't just completely look at a video and be like, perfect, we'll just do exactly what that says. Yeah. Because that won't be creative. And so you want to, you can use a video to get like inspiration, but you want to make it your own idea. It's kind of boring too. Yeah. Right? I mean, you're like, oh, I'm just going to do that. I mean, yeah. and I'm looking yes. at what you have over there for the car and that is not boring. Yes. <laughs> not boring. Yeah. How long did it take you to build the car? So... 14 tries, okay. and um, I'm still working on it right now. So about nine, uh, about seven months. Do you, do you wake up some mornings and you go, I got an idea? Yeah. And then you try it and you go, oh, man, mm -hmm. what was I thinking? Yeah, so with um, the wheels, we originally tried to use a dowel that's that was not very thick, and so it would just complete, it would eventually come off and it would snap it from mm -hmm. all of the power of the switch. Yep. And we also tried to make the base out of cardboard, which, um, believe it or not, cardboard is not very strong. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> we, but I'm in construction, so I, I when I watch you put all this stuff together, right? there's so many, I mean, people have ideas all the time that we see in construction, and some of them were like, boy, that's a really cool idea. There's other ones like, this is never going to work. And then you got to like go through the process of proving to somebody that designed it that's not going to work. So, yeah. Um, uh, like, um, we actually uh, built a really cool um, thing that we got inspiration off of. It was a um, America's Got Talent thing. It was this large um, thing that had four, uh, that had one person in the middle. Two people right here and two people right here, but they were uh, all four of these were mannequins. Okay. And we got an inspiration off of that because our theme is nursery rhymes. And so we um, got, uh, uh, we did all of the Jacks from the nursery rhymes, like Jack oh, and Jill, cool. Jack Spratt, things like that. Cool. So That's cool. Have, so each person is a life size puppet that. We have PVC that, so I'm standing in the middle, and I'm Jack and Jill, and I'm standing in the middle, and wherever I move, they can move to. So okay. if I'm swinging my arms, they do the same. It's very creepy, but also cool. <laughs> yes. We have gotten scared from them, but we have made them very life. Don't lose this. Halloween is around the corner. <laughs> all right. Can be like really good. Like if you go up to a door with all these, it's like, I'm here for all my friends. Can I have enough food, candy <laughs> for all of them? Candy. Yes. <laughs> I, I, yes. Trick or treat with Hang out with me. I can help person. you out. <laughs> <laughs> They've enjoyed putting them in their parents' vehicles, uh -huh. like in the passenger seat. And like mm -hmm. <laughs> strapping them in, putting on lights so that people can actually see them. Yeah. Um, we uh, have also made... Um, a egg 
like a Humpty, a Humpty Dumpty egg that is made out of just paper mache. We blew up this gigantic balloon, and then we paper mache over it. We have uh have we have had to do overdo it twice. Yeah. Um. And because you couldn't put him back together. Uh. Nope. I guess. <laughs> <I didn't ask. laughs> we asked all the king's horses and all the king's men, but they yeah. couldn't do anything. I was gonna suggest that, but you already <laughs> thought of it. Yes. Um. We, uh, we have also made, um, paper that is recycled, and that's what this inside part is of a pumpkin. Okay. Um, so basically we just, um, put in paper and then shredded it, put in, uh, water, and then dehydrated it, and it made this really cool bowl. And we've done that for a lot of different things. And then we paper mache it over here. I, I, you, I love all the creativity and I love everything that, that, uh, that Kelsey and Isaac, you guys are getting to do. We just went to school. Yeah. I think your mom and Amanda are probably on the same thing. You showed up to school, you read, you did your math, yeah. you did your spelling test. And then it, we, fun stuff like that was, no, we're not doing we that. We had one competition that sort of reminds me of this and it was a cardboard boat competition. Mm -hmm. And it was, there were certain rules and regs. You had to keep it within a certain budget, a certain size, but you had to get into the cardboard boat and whoever made it the furthest across the bay won the competition. <laughs> heard of that and yeah we've, we've talked about doing it at some point with the kids I, I got to do an inventors competition once and mm -hmm. so I think this has kind of been a, an interesting thing out there for children for a long time mm -hmm. go through you know like the boxcar children were my favorite yeah. series when I was a child of children solving problems together just the children mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I think that's one of the reasons that this has been so intriguing for me to see kids solve their problems yeah. and you guys said you're going to nationals uh, uh, worlds. Worlds. You so passed the national yeah. stage. There's 30 countries that compete there. Okay. And, um, so it's basically, so it's four days of competitions because there's so many teams. And so we do our spontaneous, which is a problem that we have to, we go in a room and we can't talk about it that much. We can't talk about it until World Finals is over because some other team could get the idea and use it. So you want to spontaneously think of ideas for a problem that they give us. Like um, an example would be think of things that are blue. So a non-common response would be a blueberry, but that you'd probably get only like one point for. But you could say, you could say like, um, I could be singing the blues right now or out of the blue. Or um, you'll... Uh, blew us all away. <laughs> so, where is the competition at? Uh, Iowa State University. Okay. Which does seem like a strange place to hold a world final for anything. No, no, no. We <laughs> just talked think... about the Midwest solving <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. I, and perfect sense. Dr. Miklas is from yeah. the Midwest area. Yeah. And so and I think that he has some connections with that university. So it tends to be in the Midwest. Is he still involved in he Odyssey of the Mind? He still Very attends cool. each world-level competition, and it's kind of fun when he shows up. He's kind of the celebrity of Odyssey. Yeah. <laughs> Is he that dude who was the German? <laughs> Different, <laughs> so, dude. So Different dude. I wanted to yep. explain just a little more what he was yeah. talking about with spontaneous. There's two parts of the mm -hmm. Odyssey competition. The one is this long-term problem that they've solved. So that's they're building things, and they, they work extensively on it. The other part is called spontaneous, which Isaac was just talking about. Spontaneous is where you go in. I don't get to go with them. His mom, who is the other coach, doesn't get to go in. Just the team by themselves with a group of, of judges. And they're given a problem they've never seen before. It might be something that they build. So some unusual materials like plastic forks and toothpicks and popsicle sticks and rubber bands and something really strange like yeah. a baseball bat. And they build something that has to hold weight or it has to cantilever out or something unusual. And they don't know what the problem's going to be. They'll see a pile of materials. Oh, we have to build something. Or they might have to say creative answers. So like he was saying, say things that are blue. And they have to give creative answers to that. And so that's called verbal. And then sometimes it's a combination. But they don't know what they're going to get. They only get about 10 minutes. And then they walk away, and as he said, they don't even get to talk about it with even the coaches because the, the problems are used again throughout mm -hmm. different various, uh, various levels of competition. 
So that can feel a little nerve wracking. But they we practice in other other types of competition yeah. or other types of spontaneous. But they don't know what they'll get on the day. Wow. At the regionals competition, every team that I walked out looked like their fishes had died. <laughs> they all felt very sad about their their results, and um, it just turned out that they were really, really difficult problems uh-huh. at that time, and they learned a lot from that experience, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes we don't succeed as we think. I, yeah. what you, I think you learn the most from your mistakes. When you're an inventor, Absolutely. right, that's where you learn. You're like, okay, that's not going to work. So when you said that cardboard didn't work, right, the next time you have to build something, cardboard's not in the equation, right? You're like, yeah. we're just going right past that to something else. Yep. And I think that's, as an inventor, that's that's a vital part of the process. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering where you got the inspiration for the syringe propulsion system. So there is a school in California that does, a teacher does a lot of cool stuff with the students, and one of them was to make a syringe car that can go the farthest. Mm -hmm. Um, And I watched some of his videos, and so he originally built his out of, he built a couple different versions, one with just cardboard and a small syringe, and then he also built one with um, wood like mine with a um, water squirter, so a very big one that can go like 100 meters. And so then I researched more about that and found out that it's powered by atmospheric pressure and can, if I find the right type of syringe, so this is 35 millimeter, it can, depending on the size of the car, it will make it go farther or shorter distance. And uh, to, like, have a, um, uh, what we have found through the years is, like, you can't have a team uh, that is just like that every single one of them has the exact same strong point. Like you mm-hmm. need actors, you need costume makers, you need stylists, you need craftsmen, you need um, builders, technical people. You need all sorts of people to get um, everyone because everyone needs their like own strong point job. Mm-hmm. Uh, you are on one of my favorite sayings of all yeah. time is if you're ever in a room and everybody's agreeing with you, you're in the wrong room. Absolutely. Right. If there's not at least one or two people disagreeing, they might be right. They might be wrong. They might mm-hmm. be partially right, but you want that disagreement. You want that discussion. If you come out with an idea and everyone says, that's great. You're, I'm in the wrong place selling this idea. <laughs> you never want to be the smartest that, person yeah, in the room. No, I've never <laughs> had that problem. Have you had that problem? Man? No. I have never had that problem. Well, I mean, if you're in a room of toddlers, maybe. <laughs> Oh, they definitely know a lot. <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> yes, they do. Just ask them. They will let you know. <laughs> they will tell you. Yeah. Absolutely. So when you guys are in class, um, you got to do other studies as well. But mm-hmm. it's, like, it's like, are you constantly looking forward to preparing for this competition yes. in that part of school every day? Definitely. So, it kind of depends on, <laughs> one, if you're, um, well, if you have an idea in your brain, you might definitely think I can't wait to show this idea to my team and can't wait to see if this works but also sometimes like Odyssey can definitely be discouraging well there are lots of fails right Mm -hmm. lots of fails before you get a success yes and um you uh like sometimes it can be that like yesterday you had a rough uh, time in your odyssey but then like at school when uh, while you're doing it you just look forward to it so much and then it just becomes like the best thing ever yeah yeah it's been fun to see them grow from seven individuals mm-hmm. to this this tight friendship team and i've mm-hmm. seen that i've coached um elementary level all the way through high school level through the years and i've seen the same process happen Mm-hmm. Uh, I, don't, I want to talk specifically about these kids, but I helped to coach another team this year that started out to the point that we thought they're not, we're going to have to pull them apart. Yeah. And they came together in such fabulous ways. So mm-hmm. it, it's always this gelling that, that occurs and it's this, it's kind of magical. Um, this, this group of kids, several of them have been together for several years. They've lost team members who have grown up. They've um, had some who've moved and so forth. And then this year and last year, they ended up with new members that have come in. And so each year, you have to kind of find that new gel, that new yeah. 
magic again, and it's always exciting to see what they're doing. And because these kids all go to the same school, they get to talk about their their solutions and their ideas at school. Montessori is such a unique model for education. It's all about, in fact, um, Marie Montessori's number one phrase is follow the child. Mm-hmm. So by being able to follow everything that they're coming up with and saying, all right, you run with that for a little while. Mm-hmm. And I've seen their teachers do that in their regular education. So it just, this program follows so nicely with Montessori education for that reason. So that they can do it in the regular classes as they're doing their math or they're walking around and having a very individualized experience as they're working on their language arts and and then now in their STEM program, which is um, the kind of the, the acronym for science, technology, engineering. And I like to call it STEAM, art and math. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what Odyssey does for kids, gives them all of that and it brings everything together that they're working on in school. So they, they go off and learn this skill at school. Ah, now look at this. I have this new tool in my bag of creativity. Mm-hmm. And um, so Montessori and Odyssey has blended really nicely that way. We're really grateful for their support this year. That's awesome. Now, Iowa might have a big connection for Dr. Miklas, but it's very far away from St. Augustine. <laughs> it is. It's so, so far. How are you guys getting there? There's a fundraising site on the mm-hmm. Montessori page, right? Mm-hmm. So how are you guys doing with fundraising? How is it looking to actually get there? Are you guys flying? Uh, we, are, we are. Which is exciting yeah. for them, but also really, really expensive. Yeah. Apparently, there's a concert for, I want to say, George Strait that very okay. same weekend. And oh, so... Wow. The, the flights actually were higher as a result of that. Oh, no. Uh, we've looked at some flights to go to various other parts of the world, even in this in the coming six months, and it, it was cheaper to go out of country than to go oh, wow. to Iowa. So that was a little Come bit on, frustrating. I know. <laughs> and uh, also just getting their materials there. So they have built big backdrops. They've mm-hmm. built um, their, their Humpty Dumpty is big, and it can't yeah. be collapsed. And um, so we really have to drive there are some of their materials there. We have accommodations and food, and their registration fees were pretty high this year compared to some other years that we've ex- um, just paid for state fees. They're not mm-hmm. as high. So, yeah, we're we're talking big money. Um, <laughs> yeah. we, uh, we're having every single person uh, fly except for one kid who is um, – uh, they have this gigantic van. Yeah. Uh, and we're gonna store all our stuff in there. We're gonna break it down, except for some things that can't be break, broken down. Uh, and then we're gonna have an entire day of just rebuilding. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we have to have extra accommodation days so that they can just be there a whole day just to rebuild everything. Yeah. Yeah. So it. we are doing lots of fundraising. That yes. is, so you, I've put the, the link for the St. Augustine Montessori Odyssey of the Mind team in the comments. So you guys can click that link and you can donate there. But there's um, there's a music night also, mm-hmm. right? Yep. So tell me about that. Yeah, we're excited about it. We've done a, a few others. And this one's the, our next and possibly biggest fundraiser. It is this Friday. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be outside of Trinity Parish Church on St. George Street in St. Augustine downtown. Mm-hmm. We're super excited for this location because it's high traffic. It's, mm-hmm. it's gorgeous it's right weather now. Plaza, it's right yeah. on the plaza. And um, 6 o'clock, no cover fee. And we're going to have some yeah. lovely people to come and perform for us. So we have Lauren Gilliam, who is kind of celebrity around yeah, here. Bad dad mama. Yeah, Baghdad Mama. We're super excited for her to come and perform. We have some Odyssey team members and some past, like some of their siblings who have agreed to come and do a little performing. Awesome. And we Dancing. have Music Misfits. Very cool. Who is um, it's a great and wonderful band Pete too. and Davey are going to be there? Of course. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Music Misfits, I'm just kidding. And we, and we welcome any others who want to come and join. Yeah. We'll have some treats. We're going to have some drinks and just a really fun night. We're going to have cotton candy. Cotton candy. Yeah. Kids are excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> That's always the right answer is cotton candy. Um, so it looks like you're going to have concessions. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm assuming there's bake sale. You can buy drinks. You can buy snacks. Yep. You can just donate money. That, right. Come and listen to music. Meet the kids. Yes. And we'll have um, a raffle. So awesome. we have some nice items from local businesses that are going to be in that raffle op- uh, raffle basket. And we have some STEM kits that the kids helped put together. So if you want to come and try out your hand at creating, 
there's some kind of kind of those spontaneous type ide- um, items in there. So Very weird cool. things like Q-tips and b- balloons and um, rubber bands and things. And, and the can... idea is build your own little car. Yeah. So that's that's there and available too. You're on we're my team. You guys are on my team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys on my team. They're solid. Not for on sure. Amanda's team. We're gonna um we uh in it um like the two main things that you can build is like a little mini rubber band car that looks a lot like this for a only, only simple. Yeah, it, it's only simple, but it's triangular. Mm-hmm. And we only need one. Child. Yes. <laughs> um and uh then there's this little catapult. Because when in Very doubt, cool. build a catapult. Always, always build a catapult. <laughs> right. Not always so how much money do you need? So uh, to get the whole crew there, and with knowing that we're kind of covering some of the extra materials that we'll have mm-hmm. to buy to transport and so forth, it's going to be close to between thirteen to fifteen thousand dollars. Where that's we're hoping not going to be fully that amount, but that's kind of our goal. So we're we're getting there, but we still have several thousand to go. Yeah. How many several thousands? Do you need? <laughs> About three. About three. Yeah. So we would love to to get at least that much, or mm-hmm. ideally a little more, so that we can have it all covered. And when is the trip? It's in two weeks. So two weeks from no. today, they will be completely working on twelve days. We'll be, yes. <laughs> so we'll be there, and they'll be building, and we'll be starting this competition. Yep. So we need to have a big turnout this week. Yes, we do. So we need people to show up. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. We need to remind people tomorrow night. We will. We do that would be wonderful. So yes, we will do that as well. Um, but we definitely, so show up, donate, mm-hmm. or go online if you can't make it down there Friday night. Yeah. yeah. And it's a good time. This is going to be a great weekend to be in St. Augustine. Absolutely. Sounds like it. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And I will forward um, this flyer to the morning show crew. Wonderful. Thank they, you. They have a tendency to talk on the morning show and the afternoon show about where you can hear music in St. Augustine. So we can add that to that list. I'll do Fabulous. do my best to get that added. Wonderful. I would love to thank the sponsors that we've already yes, had. That sure. would be yes. so great. We have a nice list of local sponsors who've helped us. So we have Inc., which is investing in kids. Mm-hmm. We are so grateful to them. They helped cover some of our registration fee. We have the Pioneer School. Again, I'm a staff member there. And we have some of their siblings who have um, done other Pioneer experiences. And some of these kids might go there. So we're grateful to them. Uh, we're super grateful to Terry Abulafia who, and Christina Pope who have donated. And we're grateful to the region from Odyssey of the Mind who has been very supportive of helping us get our name and our information out there to fundraise and they've helped us out a little bit with finances as well. We're grateful to Scoops uh, Ice Cream. These guys are frequenters of Scoop because it's kind of near their school and they have gone there for ice cream regularly as celebration. So Scoop has been very sweet. Grateful to uh, Title Car Wash and King of Pops. So we're excited for them. And That's Casey's awesome. Granola, which is this lovely bakery down the street from their school. Doesn't have any affiliation with the school, but they've been so sweet and supportive, too. That's awesome. So we're excited for them. And they have wonderful food. <laughs> and, and, gr- and granola. And car dealerships. We have gone to some, and we are, we are hoping that some more of them want to help us out. Very nice. There are some great, there are great people that are, are very kind and giving in this community. I mean, that's so one of the much. things that, that's really great about St. Augustine and St. John's mm-hmm. County is there's a lot of very big hearted people that are willing to help. Um, off the topic question, favorite ice cream? <laughs> um, uh, mint Oreo cheesecake. Chocolate mint Oreo cheesecake. cheesecake. Chocolate, I'm all about the Moose Tracks ice cream. I second that 100%. <laughs> and Alicia? Oh, um, anything with pecans and caramel. Yeah. Uh, I'm a, sugar free. I'm a sugar. What? I know. What? <laughs> is that kind of a thing for our uh, generation? We're going to have to have a judge's ruling on whether that even counts as ice cream. <laughs> uh, no, ch- uh, chocolate, chocolate chip. Mm. Let's go all in. So, yeah. Yep. I yeah. like Moose Tracks and Ben and Jerry's fish food. It's chocolate ice cream oh. with marshmallow and caramel and fudgy fish in it. Yeah. So good. Um, so about three thousand dollars we got to raise. You yes. need to raise to get you there. Yep. Um, and, and and two weeks to get that. Twelve days. Twelve, 12 days. days. Twelve right. days. Yes. Let me get this right. Twelve <laughs> days. Okay. You are not an inventor if you are not exact. Uh, that is. That's absolutely correct. Yes. <laughs> absolutely correct. Mm-hmm. What's yes. that? Measure twice, cut once. Mm, that's, a, that's a contractor saying, I wish my guys listened. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's, it's really, yes. Um, do you guys have a favorite inventor? 
Yes. Who's your favorite inventor? Albert Einstein. You have him on the back of our shirt? You have him yeah. on the back? Albert made the back? That's awesome. All right, his creativity quote. Is, creativity is thinking what others have thought. It's thinking what others have... You want me to read it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, creati- uh, creativity is seeing uh, what others and uh, think... Uh, it, Seeing what others see and thinking what no one else has ever thought. Albert Einstein. I got the creativity from him. Yep. You did. I got one word. You got one word? That's okay. You started it. (laughs) Somebody's got to start the ball rolling. Yes. These guys are big fans of Mark Rober, who has a a lot of cool videos out there. They like to watch. Mark Rober definitely informed my son's choice in science fair this year, (laughs) for sure. What's your favorite Mark Rober video? Squirrel maze. Yeah, those are fun. Uh, I like the all the squirrel mazes. Yep. I was telling Mr. Mike about the squirrel mazes because he he's battling a squirrel in his backyard. <laughs> so I was encouraging him to be a little more creative. Just follow Mark Rober. I have a I have a bird feeder that the squirrels <laughs> have left alone for eight or nine years, and I changed the food in it, and apparently the new food attracted the squirrels. Mm-hmm. They have to hang from the gutter. Mm-hmm. Oh, then they have to one arm down a yes. rod to get to the top of this little birdhouse. Yes. And then they have to have their back legs holding on to either side of the hinge on top of the roof. Oh, wow. And then they hang over and they feast until <laughs> I go out there and chase them away. Yeah. And they look at me like they're annoyed that I'm chasing them away from the food that I provided for the birds, not mm-hmm. for them. Yes. You could just provide them for the schools. <laughs> yes. Right. Just the birds beg. I like the birds better. <laughs> I'm a bird guy. <laughs> the uh, the raccoon is actually the Odyssey mascot. Yes. Okay, so, so that's why there's in our backyard. that's why there's and yeah. and it's all because of how much of a problem solver little raccoons can be too. Yeah. And uh, so I was thinking, yeah, the, and the whole trash thing because a lot of recycled materials go into <laughs> Odyssey problems because their budget is so small. Yeah. They're required to put on a form how much they've spent, and it has to be within mm-hmm. a very tight budget. Yeah. So they tend to go with really unusual materials. recycled yeah. kinds of materials. We've gone through a lot of junk mail to yeah. shred into the things that they're creating. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's very <laughs> cool. Um, uh, yeah, I was going to ask about the, the raccoon tail in the logo on the fundraising site. <laughs> As it seemed kind of out of left field that there was a raccoon tail there. But that yes. makes sense now. His name is Omer. Omer. And that is because a child who is an odyssey of the minder mm-hmm. is also called an Omer. But his official name is and, also Omer. Um, there's a um, manatee that is representing our region because we're the manatee region. Uh, and ours is the... Um, Odie. Uh, Odie. Odie the manatee? Yes. Very cool. Odie, Omer, and who is? Phil the flamingo is the Phil state the flamingo. mascot. Yes. Right. So the first they go to regional levels. So we're actually a really small region, and having a team go from the manatee region, North Florida area, to world is actually pretty rare. Yes. We were the only team in their entire region that made it past their, past the state level North this year. So it ha- it's happened, but it's yeah. not as common as some of the bigger areas, like in Miami has a huge region, mm-hmm. Orlando has a huge region. The Sun region. Right. So this is even more um, exciting for their team to go because only one of two teams are doing the vehicle problem in all of Florida, and Florida has more teams than anyone in any other area or state in the whole world. Yeah, the so the, the competition's pretty high for Florida kids. Yeah, the Miami team will show up in their own jet. I'm just <laughs> telling you that right now. Yeah, well, and then, the they, you know, you have the kids yes. from the mm-hmm. – from the, Space Coast area, and I mean, those are kids of engineers. So they're, oh, yeah. They're that yeah, really amazing thing. So it's pretty exciting. A small school, first-time team being sponsored by their school from North Florida, and here they are going to Worlds. That's yes. really cool. Um, Actually, the first year that we did was lockdown. So um, uh, it was still while it was, like, cleaning up, kind of. Um, And so every uh, person... Uh, got to go to, um, everyone in our region got to go to state. So that was our first year of state. And then we got third that year. And then second year, we got second place, um, uh, which was last year. We built a Rube Goldberg machine that... The one uh, that kept falling over. Those and then so Pale his mother. <laughs> um, and then, 
this year we got first at regionals, and mm. so third place at states. And Which third place at states. We place at states. Yes. Yep. Wow. Very exciting cool. for them. Yeah. That is that is absolutely awesome. So when you went to school this year, did you go? We're we're going to place at states. <laughs> so we, we got this this year. Yeah, we actually, definitely went into it with that goal. Yeah. Uh, we um actually wouldn't have gone to worlds if it weren't for that amazing team who dropped out. <laughs> so as one of three, it, they can take two, and one team wasn't able to go. So as a third place team, they were next. They were next in line, and they were. They actually only missed second place by a few points, so yeah. they were they were well qualified. Yep. That's how I got to be Miss Florida preteen. Oh, the chick dropped out, and I qualified. And Congratulations! I, I got her crown. <laughs> <laughs> I bumped an eighth grade, an eight year old off. <laughs> it's, it's a weird story. <laughs> I've not heard this story, but now I have more questions. Default. That, default. Uh, yeah, that was me. Yeah, a lot of life is being in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? A lot of life is being in the right place at the right time. Nice. So, mm -hmm. and you guys are in the right place at the right time. So what, what are you looking forward to most on the trip? So, um, one, we get to stay in the dorms. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've never stayed in one. No one has stayed in one. And um, also, it's um, getting the entire experience of getting to world finals and being able to see all of the different countries perform and getting to watch all of the different levels. Yep. The rock climbing wall in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> the amenities. Um, they are excited. <laughs> uh, also, um, uh, I think that one of my things that I'm most excited about is being with uh, one of my best friends on my team. And... Um, uh, just like having the entire experience, it's just like awesome. Well, I've watched you two during the show, and 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 Kelsey and Isaac have finished each other's sentences mm -hmm. throughout the entire show, <laughs> which tells me you guys have done a lot of work together. Yep. And nobody ever looked at the other ones. That's not what I was going to say, right? <laughs> so you guys have done a really good job of working together. So I applaud you for that. Is it anyone's first flight flying out to Iowa? Um, you know, in Iowa once. Yeah. I don't know if any of them. I, it's a first flight. That is. I think good. it's Lou. It might be. Yeah. I think one of them is. That's I cool. I think one of our teammates is his second flight. Yeah. Something um, fun that um, the Odyssey actually began that Disney now claims as their thing <laughs> is pin trading. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, so Odyssey began the concept of pin trading back at the very beginning of their competitions where kids come with their, I mean, apparently gigantic collections of pins. Mm -hmm. and and they trade them it's very similar to the idea with disney so they have pins that they've been collecting we should have worn them yeah and um they have some beautiful ones that were designed for our region that match this super oh, cool so starry night shirt very cool and they get to trade those out and i think they'll be popular because they're super pretty they're going to have a collection of those and to trade the only one who has them. they have florida pins and they're looking forward to to trading out other pins so i think they're forgetting that that's one of the things that they've They've talked a lot about. Since we're yeah. the only people from our region going, we're the we, only people who could possibly have that shirt. And there's also t-shirt trading, so we those will also be popular because um, we bought a few extras, and we yeah. also have a few extra pins. Um, and there's also this big, gigantic thing that I only realized at State this year. Um, uh, it was that there was just all of these tables mm -hmm. set out in this big room. Um, where they had the closing ceremonies. Um, but it was, like, kind of over on the side. And they, uh, uh, people just, like, had started collecting and just had it on, like, bubble wrappers, things like yeah. that. Just started collecting and people traded. That's really cool. And then people with gigantic collections on things like this, things like towels and things. Yeah. When I was when I was in the pageant circuit, we traded pens also mm. on our banners, mm -hmm. and so everyone always wanted Florida stuff. So I was a very popular spot to come and get Florida swag. Um, so be prepared with lots of pens; people are going to want those. <laughs> Bobby wants to know what countries are represented in the competition: uh, China, Japan, Russia, Brazil, uh, Canada, U.S., and more than I'm 
forgetting. What's it like <laughs> when the Russian team shows up and they're 35 year olds? <laughs> well, they're, <Mike>. they're not either. <laughs> they're not either because at the end of the day, it is uh, still children. Yeah. yeah. What, I'm all, the Russian, I'm just what I'm always kind of amazed by is how they are able to transport those giant things. Yeah. yeah and internationally. I think they come yeah. sort of similar to what they're doing and have mm -hmm. a day to rebuild. I think some of those teams come a week in advance yeah. and rebuild everything. Wow. They can also have it all shipped, but then their costs are even that much higher. Yeah. So that was why we were grateful that and kind of told them, you have to break everything down and flat pack it. We're Ikeaing. Yeah. <laughs> Ikea in reverse. Right. Yeah. It's got well, I think it's a great experience for you guys. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a, a super fun thing. Congratulations on getting as far as you've gotten. So I, I have a question. And, you know, you're involved in all this. You're doing all this great um, engineering and inventing. Mm -hmm. What do you guys want to be when you grow up? And I know you can change and you have lots of time, but right now, if you could pick something, what, what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, either an engineer or a paleontologist. Dancer or Broadway star. <laughs> guess who works on the scripts in the car? Yes. <laughs> and guess which one designed the car? Yep. <laughs> well, uh, uh, well, I got that. I, are you the yep. spokesperson for the team? What does that mean? Are you the one that, that does all the dialogue for the team? Um, yes, but also my friend. Okay. But she just joined this year, so. Mm -hmm. yeah, she does like to answer the questions. Yeah. yeah. She likes to create the costumes. Yeah. yeah. Are there costumes? So do you created all the costumes for um, this competition? Yes, except for a couple of them that my so friend made. I'm creating right now the big puppet. Mm -hmm. All of us are making. Yeah. Uh, he did the structure with his friend, whose also strong point is building. Um, what we did is we put hinges on every joint in the body, so we put hinges, not every joint on the wrist, right but here. to every spot that needs to move at the angle that, like walking up a hill. Because yeah. it's going to be Because we need Jack and Joe walk. And so with my other jacks on me. Yeah, so it's going to be like walking, so we need the hinges to face the same way. Mm -hmm. yep. They had some interesting fails with that where they put it together and a hinge was going your elbow doesn't go that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we also, um, uh, this is a costume that I made. Uh, so it was Humpty Dumpty's costume. And when he pops out of his egg, he's a rooster. <laughs> uh, his name is King Roosterton. And um, the first. he, yes. Um, <laughs> and he has this uh, mask thing. Um, that covers his entire face except for right here. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like this big thing for his waddle. Mm -hmm. Um, and then um, he has um a pool noodle for his yeah. beak. Um, that goes around his head. Um, and then a shirt with some flowy things as his wings. Mm -hmm. Um, just regular shorts and um a big. Um, tail, mm -hmm. but we are actually going to add real feathers. Very cool. Awesome. That is really good. Mm -hmm. um, so this Friday, May 10th, yep. yes. 6 o'clock at Trinity Parish, mm -hmm. 215 mm -hmm. St. George Street. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, this isn't in the buildings. This is in the that courtyard yep. space. Yes. On the, right on King Street. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. Awesome. So walk along the King Street sidewalk and you'll find uh, the music and the food and the snacks and all that. Very cool. Cotton candy. <laughs> the cotton candy will be there. It's a promise. Are you working the cotton candy booth? I think me and my friend are. So what you're saying is they might lose some profits off the cotton candy? I'm just Maybe. asking. I'll supervise. You have to You'll taste see. test. <laughs> I think that if there's any left, our team might get some. Will you promise mm -hmm. that you try it and make sure it's okay for everybody else? Yeah, to obviously. Okay. We're going to make All sure right. it's not poison. Good. good. All right. That's good. Yes. Uh, there is no There's no parking. Uh, Crystal says you can just walk up. Just walk mm -hmm. up. Yeah, there's plenty of places around to mm -hmm. park. I mean, you got to be, if you're a St. Augustine resident. You get creative. You get creative on where the parking is. Yep. Um, and I think you guys are going to, this is going to be a great Friday night for you guys. And I, I hope yeah. that you guys get all the way to the to the goal of, of $3,000. Absolutely. And if you're yeah. out there and you want to help, this is a great yep. project to help on. And uh, please help these kids get to the world competition. Yep. So Thank you. the website says that you're at 9,400 roughly, and the goal is set at around $12,000, but you said that ideally it's more, cost. yeah, ideally okay. 13 to 14 would be great. But if we got to 12, we would be super excited too. Yeah. So that's why I say two with the goal of three. Yeah. Awesome. We're just going to say three. 
That would be amazing. <laughs> I'm just going to say three, and then you got a little extra, a little yeah. miscellaneous slush fund in case you need that for anything uh, when pins. you get out there. Pins. Oh, pins. pins. Those extra pins. And some extra t-shirts. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Extra pins, extra t-shirts, probably one of those hat thingies I'm probably going to need. But and like probably it. some food in the airport, because oh, yeah. we all know yeah. that's expensive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for the sure. Our region is providing a lot of us pins for us. Pins Free pins. And to trade. Shirts, to trade. To trade. Very so cool. what country's pin, like right now, without so, seeing it to you, I really would like to get a pin from that country. I want Russia. Japan. And Russia my Japan. friend I wish um, Japan right last year was fun. is giving me some money so that I can buy a set of pins to trade for him because he wants... Um, Lincoln? No. Um, but he wants a couple specific pins from countries. And so there's definitely... who He's an Odyssey of alumni right now. And so he's, so pin trading is a very big thing. So if you don't go to Worlds, you definitely can get Ask. people to get pins for you. Yep. <laughs> just, yep. just random people. So you're a man on a mission for your friend? Yeah. Yeah. Very and cool. um, me and my friend, we had some friends who were, who made it to state also, but didn't get to go to Worlds. And they were really, um, like, we, we were really, really sad that they couldn't come. But uh, we um, are going to collect pins uh, for them also. Very cool. That is awesome. If you guys want to come back and tell us how it all went. Oh, that would be fun. We'll have you guys sure. come back and tell us how it all went. You can bring some video, and Amanda will put the video mm-hmm. up. And our pins. Yep. And, and we can pens. actually we have... actually tell you about Spontaneous. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. That would be very cool. That would be awesome. So if you guys want to do that when you come back, we'd mm-hmm. love to and have you guys back. we can bring back. the entire team. Yeah. Uh, you can bring the entire team. <laughs> yeah. We do not have enough microphones, but you can bring the entire team. Yeah. So well, people can, can share. They can yeah. We have six people. We have, oh, well, we'll figure that out. <laughs> yeah, we can work it out. We can bring work microphones. It out. We will be overwhelmed. That's fine. I'm used to being overwhelmed by children. We actually need a picture of six children in here to make Pete Melfi sweat. <laughs> <laughs> we promise we won't break anything, Pete. <laughs> I did not make that promise, Pete. <laughs> But if when we do, she said they we, can build it. And when can she it. said we, it was not including me. But yes, I do think the kids can fix every yeah. bit of that. So, Alicia, thank you so much. Thank you. For, for coming in. Amanda, thanks for setting this up. Of course. Amazing is awesome. You're wearing purple for Barbara Jean today. Well, well, she didn't even comment on that. I know. And Kelsey and Isaac, good luck. Mm-hmm. Safe thank travels. Thank I hope you. that this weekend uh, you raise the more money than you need. And I hope that it is an amazing yeah. trip for you guys. Thank so, yeah. you. Thank you so much for having us. Thank oh, you so much. Absolutely. And that's us. That's us. We'll be back tomorrow with trivia.